What's going on my curious bunch of health fanatics? Welcome back to the channel. Cognitive decline is something that many people deal with as they age, some with some experiencing terrible memory loss and worse. A recent study appears to have made a connection, which isn't classy, but worth exploring. But first, a quick message to the Google moderators. This video is not an advert. We are not selling any product or service. We are simply sharing health science news. So let's get back into it. Recent findings presented at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference in Amsterdam could be quite alarming for some people. Those who suffer from chronic constipation, which is defined as having a bowel movement only every three or more days, have an increased risk for experiencing subjective cognitive decline by a whopping 73%. So let me repeat, someone that is only having a bowel movement every three or four days has a 73% higher chance of developing subject, subjective cognitive decline. By assessing more than 112,000 adults from three distinct studies, the Nurses Health Study, Nurses Health Study 2, and Health Professionals Follow-Up Study, the authors of the latest research collected comprehensive data on participants' bowel movement frequency. The results of the study showed that people who experience constipation have cognitive aging three years greater than those who have a bowel movement once a day. Now, you may think that three years isn't much, but in the world of cognitive decline, it could be considered quite concerning. And interestingly, those who had a bowel movement more than twice daily also had higher risks, though to a lesser degree. It is clear that constipation can have a detrimental effect on mental health. Thus, it is important to take preventative measures to ensure that healthy bowel movements are maintained. There are other warning signs to cognitive impairment that may also be mitigated with some simple changes. So don't forget to hit that notification button as I will be dropping some other videos shortly about this subject. But based on emerging data, it is highly likely that a subject's microbiome, the gut bacteria, is what is causing this effect. Different foods can cause increases in either good or bad bacteria, as bacteria can assist in breaking foods down. When bacteria break down food, they disassemble food molecules into smaller molecules, which we call metabolites. Those metabolites may fit into a cell surface receptor, like a lock and key, or they may prevent the healthy function of a biochemical reaction, or they may induce improper biochemical reactions, or even something else. Either way, these metabolites are what can go on to cause health benefits or adverse side effects and are mostly how we judge if bacteria is good or bad. A 2017 study showed that dietary alterations could change levels of good or bad bacteria rapidly. The same study examined multiple diets such as the Mediterranean diet, the Western diet, gluten-free diet and various food groups and even certain food types. One of the interesting findings was how fast the microbiome can change with dietary change. And I quote here, a change in diet to one that is strictly animal-based or plant-based alters microbial composition within just 24 hours of initiation with reversal to baseline within 48 hours of diet discontinuation, end quote. So a single day of eating junk food can totally change your microbiome, which may increase your chance of poor health outcomes. The same study also says the gut microbiome of animals fed a high fat or high sugar diet is more prone to circadian rhythm disruption, end quote. For those who suffer from irregular bowel movements and impaired cognitive functioning, replenishing good bacteria that produce butyrates, which are fatty acids that act as a shield to protect gut bacteria or against bacteria and other microbes entering the bloodstream is essential. The benefits of butyrates for digestive health can't be ignored. Eating high fiber foods, taking fiber supplements and consuming prebiotics and some full fat dairy products like butter, cheese, milk, in moderation of course, can make a world of difference to your microbiome. Other findings such as having decreased levels of butyricococcus and ruminococcus gut bacteria were associated with a higher level of Alzheimer's disease. High fiber foods such as flaxseed, beans, lentils, chia, high pectin fruits like apples or berries, and vegetables like garlic or onions can boost those bacterial strains. 
Meanwhile, those with poor cognition had abnormally high amounts of a rod-shaped bacteria called allostypes, which thrive when exposed to animal fats. However, they can also play a protective role, so keeping them in check and their levels low is key here. So reduce your animal fat intake, especially if cognitive decline runs in your family. And if you are new to microbiome science, I will link to another video up here shortly for you. Always chat with your doctor about health data you see online. Don't forget to grab a copy of my book, The Anti-Aging Toolkit, second edition out now. Hit that thumbs up button, fist bump the subscribe button, or face the consequences of your actions. Visit me at www.scienceofaging.life and as always, stay young and stay vibrant.